Hi, this is uh, Tim Richardson. This is a little uh, interview I did on ROB TV, Report on Business Television, in uh, 2005. And uh, what I've done is in 2010, gone back and had a look at the clip and added in some more up to date information. This interview is about uh, weather extremes and typhoons and hurricanes and, and things like that. And what I wanted to do was use it as a way of talking about how the geographic environment affects international business. So uh, watch the clip of me talking in 2005 and then also have a look at the uh, parts I splice in between with some updates on some things as per uh, 2010. Well, 2005 was a year for cleanup and starting over for many businesses. Natural disasters wreaked havoc on countries and operations. The tsunami, earthquakes, forest fires. Then along came the hurricanes, Katrina and Rita. It was expected to cost $150 billion U.S. to get the southern states back on their feet after Katrina. Four months later, cities, buildings, and oil rigs are still being mended, all with another potential year of devastation ahead. For more on how companies can prepare, I'm joined by Tim Richardson, professor, professor of international business at Seneca College and U of T. Thanks for coming in, Tim. My pleasure. So what did businesses learn in, term of, in terms of risk manage and management from what happened this past year? Well, I think the weather was a great equalizer. For many years, companies have been stressing themselves to understand uh, customer relationships relationship management and many different complicated models associated with that and all of a sudden you have a weather extreme that comes along and wipes out your source of supply so it doesn't matter what kind of customer database you have if you don't have the product on the shelves there's no business going to be done so that's been a real eye-opener for a lot of businesses and, and so um, do you think many have put into place new risk management policies some have um, but of course it, it's a uh, it's a consequence of thinking about where you're going to best spend your money. Some companies who are going to be successful in 2006 are those companies that are going to have uh, communication systems that can handle information about uh, sort of forward-thinking circumstances. For example, if you were a fast food products company and you knew something about weather extremes in Southern California or Southern Florida where citrus is coming from, then you could make some planning decisions really quick about whether you're going to talk about some fruit combination or whether you're going to talk about bacon double cheeseburgers because the weather was warm in the Midwest and hog prices are down. So that's the kind of thing that companies have to watch for. But, but what about these really very big um, disasters which, which you know, are, are very difficult to mm -hmm. predict? I mean, 9-11 came out of the blue. Mm -hmm. Katrina, arguably, mm -hmm. you expect hurricanes during yeah. hurricane season. Contingency planning. So, but, but, but how much is there going on? Well, let's talk about the hurricanes, for example. Uh, it's been difficult to try and predict how this is going to move forward. Uh, some of the people at uh, Colorado State University have said that we're in the middle of a 20-year cycle. Apparently these things come 20 years and then we have 20 years of peace and calm. We're at about the 11th year of this, this cycle. But aside from that, I guess we say when we're talking to students in business, it's not so matter how good you can be, but worrying about circumstances that will affect everybody. So it's not whether you're good at business, but whether you can handle all these risk situations that, that happen inevitably. So uh, contingency planning is one of the best ways that companies can handle that. Not so much uh, just information about what a company is going to do in a what-if scenario, but also who's going to be responsible for that. And can people know that information in advance when a bad situation happens, they can react fast. If you expect that almost all companies will have to deal with these things, then the companies that re can co recover faster are going to be the ones that can have business continuity in a very, very intense competitive environment. But, th I mean, that's the point, in a way. Mm -hmm. It's a very intense competitive yeah. environment. It's a, it, there's the tyranny of quarterly earnings. Public yes. companies have to report every 90 days, and that's what they're, you know, focused on. And these are, you know, things right. that are maybe going to happen. Mm -hmm. How difficult is it for a CEO to make the decision to worry about those kinds of things? It's very difficult, and not only difficult, but sometimes they don't even want to because, the, as I said, the intensity of the competitive environment is so much that the money they have available to be able to spend on such things uh, is held against other things like uh, market promotions campaign or uh, additional increases. research or so on. So they're just having to judge. So some companies say, well, you know, we're going we're gonna to go with the contingency planning and we're going to pretty well count on a bad thing happening. 
We don't know what it's going to be, but we're going to count on something. So if we can recover faster than other companies that didn't mm -hmm. set that aside, then in that gap, you know, like a company that has a backup generator, when we had that power blackout and all their ice cream doesn't get frozen. Mm -hmm. So that kind of a scenario. Yeah. And, and so what about political risk? Um, well, political risk is tempted to think that it's getting worse and worse because you're thinking of Iraq and Afghanistan and so on. But I've been reading a number of reports saying in terms of the total global circumstance, we're actually perhaps, according to some people, a little bit more at peace now than we were a decade or so ago. It's just that right now we have some very sensational circumstances of conflict which grab the news almost on a nightly basis. But in terms of the overall big picture, you know, it's not as bad as people might think. All right. Well, we are out of time, but uh, good of you to come in and see us this evening. Appreciate it. My pleasure. That's Tim Richardson, international business consultant and prof professor with Seneca College and the University of Toronto.